Hi, this is Avril Kadabra. Today we're going to go over the Wave synth engine on the Dirty Wave M8. So let's jump straight into it. This is the main parameter page. If we go up on the D-pad, we get two envelopes and also two LFOs. Each instrument also has a table, which we will get into another day because it's fairly complicated. First of all, let's look at the wave shapes. These overflow ones are pointing directly at active memory, so they can just be random shapes and they may not be the same each time you load it or each time you change firmware, etc. So they can't be relied upon, but they're also fun to make sounds with. So let's scan through some of the overflow oscillators. <laughs> make a cool sound with the overflow and you want to make sure it's always the same you can always sample within M8 so let's go to the triangle the size parameter is the resolution or a combination of bit rate and sample rate this is the most basic triangle this is three pieces see in the oscilloscope and as we go up the wave shape gets more and more detailed If you want really basic like Atari 2600 sounds you can go really low sizes and if you want higher resolution you can just crank that right up one thing worth noting about size is when you want modulate any of the parameters here the lower size setting also decreases the resolution in a way of the modulation I guess it's easier to show that so if we go to a, a pulse and we'll go to the envelope send this to the mirror I know from experience that 7 is a good number here See here it's just stepping through. So that's one thing worth considering when using the lower sizes. I usually set this around 80 for a nice Commodore 64 type pulse width. on that and you're ready to go so that is size size is very cool and gives you lots of subtle differences in the sound so don't overlook size uh, the default is 20 but since we'll be doing lots of modulation I'm gonna put it on 80 so malt malt multiplies the single cycle waveforms it's easier just to show if you so left or right on your d-pad you'll get fine increments adjustment if you go up and down you'll basically double the amount of waveforms on the screen each click so if we click up once we've got two pulse width modulation Turn 
off the LFO. So if we set this to saw wave, we have seven saws, which is exactly what the Roland Super Saw is made of, seven saws. Uh, each time you increase it, you'll notice it's a higher pitch. So we can lower our octaves, the notes we have, if I just select them all, press down on D-pad. And we'll lower the size right down. Atari Roland Super Saw. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, we have our Super Saw. I might skip ahead and show the mirror. So, mirror takes one end of the wave and yeah you see so basically we've created a super triangle now but if we go all the way we can make a reverse saw so now I've got a reverse super saw So you can flip things around. Obviously if it's a triangle, you can't mirror it because you can't mirror a triangle. So another cool thing about multiplier is it sounds like hard sync so if we modulate the multiplier super saws or super anything or if you want to do hard sync effects it's awesome to modulate so what does warp do a good one to show warp is the triangle warp biases the center of the wave shape so it kind of weight it to the left hand side I'll show that on the oscilloscope after I get rid of this modulation See it kind of magnetizes the triangle over to the left hand side. It's another one that works great in combination with other So you 
can use it for pulse width modulation uh, if you don't want to use mirror. For example, modulate warp. <laughs> And using them in combination with each other usually makes some pretty cool stuff. So let's look at the filter. I'm not sure what pole or how many pole, you know, if it's like a four pole letter filter, I'm not sure. But we have low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop. We'll modulate the filter, send the LFO to cut off. So these wave ones are interesting. Uh, they were the originally these were the only filters on wave synth, but in later firmware updates we got the proper filters. These wave ones just modify the waveform. So I guess they're like a, a faux filter. But you can get some really cool kind of I guess uh, older school sounds with these wave filters. I think the wave filters are unique to the wave synths. I don't think the other ones have that. I could be wrong, but I think so. Okay, so let's talk about amp. The amp parameter controls how loud it will be. If you go too loud it will hit the ceiling and then trigger the limiter. We have some different options for limiters. Most people, well not most people, some people might avoid using these but it's a great way to do sound design and you can get some really dirty sounds with them or other type of sounds. So we turn up this triangle, you can see when it hits the ceiling it gets cut off eventually come almost a square wave and that goes the same for all of these except, except the square because the square is already square so this is what happens when it hits the limiter so clip gives a mild distortion distortion pedals that my guitar actually work like this by turning they cut the tops off the things and make it into like a square wave so clip does that before the filter there's another one later that will do it after the filter and I'll show the difference between those when we get to that one. So the first one is sin which is sine wave. This is a, I'm going to butcher this word, but a sinusoidal effect and you get some nice FM style sounds with this. <laughs> So 
I definitely recommend trying the sinusoidal one. Especially when you're modulating multiple parameters like, well, let's just modulate warp. is wave folding so these are just different limiter types and how they're treated so it's, it's quite amazing getting some of these sounds just from the limiter <laughs> sync sounds from the track. <laughs> A weird pulse width modulation wobble there. stop the modulation to show you how this one is working. Uh, so when rap hits the ceiling it's easy to show with a triangle. Once the wave shape hits the ceiling it'll come back through the bottom of the wave shape. So you can see here the tip of the triangle coming through. Modulate the amp again. is really cool and post as I mentioned earlier does the same as clip but post distortion so let's put this to cut off distortion but if this was on clip it so this is adding the distortion before the filter we'll turn off the that's after the filter so you can hear the difference there. 
depending which one of those you want, you have the choice. Okay, so panning is just which side, the speaker, stereo field you want the sound in. You can modulate that. I like to use random and hold so each time the note plays it will pick a different place in the stereo field and hold it there and you can reduce the range of the note. dry is how much of the dry mix is sent. You can use it to increase the volume of an instrument if you don't want to use amp. Chorus. Uh, let me just change the envelope. Because we have these envelopes here as well, these have just been open up until now, but we can put this to volume. send effects so they all have their own all instruments send but the parameters on the effects are shared across all instruments if you go down to the X page here are the parameters you can adjust for these effects a lot of these can be changed or modulated on the fly using the effects tables we also have delay very nice reverb. I know Trash80, the creator of the Dirty Wave, did a great job coding this reverb. subscribe for more random Greek singing and I'll see you in the next one.